Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to run the game Grand Theft Auto 5 single player on the Apple Silicon Mac. So if you've got an M1, M2, M3 or even future M4 Mac, then this is going to be the tutorial for you. And we're going to be running the Windows version of GTA 5 on a Mac. There is no Mac port of this game, so we're forced to run this through Windows Translation Layer. And today we're going to be using Crossover, which is by far the best Windows Translation Layer you can get. We'll be combining this with D3D Metal from Game Porting Toolkit. And in order to get the best version of this, we'll be applying something called CX Patcher, which is going to allow us to use version 2.0 beta 3 in order to get the best frame rates. And if you're wondering why we're calling this the single player tutorial, that's because we can only run the single player campaign through the crossover translation layer. The multiplayer used to work through crossover. However, because of an update to anti-cheat with BattleEye, this can no longer run through crossover. However, there is a method of getting this to work using something called parallels, which allows us to buy past the battle eye anti-cheat detection. If you want to find out how to do this then make sure to click the link at the top of the video description for that for that specific video tutorial. However, just be aware that the performance of the virtual machine running Grand Theft Auto 5 on a Mac is going to be far worse, probably about 80% worse than crossover on Mac. So just bear that in mind before you go and launch into that. Anyway, in this video tutorial today, I'm going to be showing you how to install crossover, get Steam working, get the Rockstar Games launcher up, how to apply CX Patcher, how to get a controller paired and working in the game, and basically get GTA single player working as well as possible on the Apple Silicon Mac. So the first step is going to be to download crossover. So what I recommend doing is clicking at the link at the top of this video's description. Every single purchase that's made after clicking this link is going to help to support this channel and the content that I create. Once you're taken to the purchase page, you'll be able to enter this promo code Apple Gaming Wiki New. And once you press the arrow button here, it's going to go ahead and apply a 20% off discount, which is pretty huge off Crossover Plus, which is the version that we recommend for 12 months of support. However, if you want to make sure that this works for you, make sure to check out the 14 day free trial, which is what I'm going to be trialing today. Just click this try now button and then scroll down. And all we need to do is enter our email email address and name and then click the download trial now button. So once crossover is downloaded, we're going to copy it over to our applications folder and then we're going to double click to open it for the first time. Press open. It might ask you to install Rosetta 2, just let that install. And then we're going to do the free trial or if you have unlocked this already, you can enter your details here from the Code Weavers account. So I'm going to try now to start the 14 day free trial. And basically we're ready to go ahead and use crossover. But the first thing I'm going to do is to quit out and we're going to make the modifications to crossover. This is an optional step that will allow us to use the latest version of D3D Metal. At the time of recording, that's version 2.0 beta 3. So here we're going to be downloading the latest version of CX Patcher, which I'll be leaving a link in the description. And we're going to be using 0.5.6. And this contains the latest update to Game Porting Toolkit 2.0, which is D3D Metal 2.0 beta 3. So here, what we're going to do is go to Assets and then download the cxpatcher.app.zip and then put this in our downloads folder. And once that's there, we're going to go to Finder and then go to Downloads. And then we'll go to CX Patcher, double click to extract this. And then we're going to move this into our applications folder. We are going to make sure that we open up Crossover first before we start this process and then close it. And then we're going to double click on CX Patcher. If it says it can't be opened, then go to the settings menu here, go to system settings, and then go to security and privacy, and then scroll down until we find here, it says CX Patcher can't be opened. It was blocked to protect your Mac. Click open anyway. And here we can close this and press open anyway. Then we're going to type in our password and then log in. That's okay. And this will basically allow us to open up applications which aren't from the app store, type in your password, press OK. So just be aware that, of course, this is not a supported method of patching crossover. This really comes at your own risk. Do not ask Code Weavers for support or refund if you're using this method. They will not be able to help you. If you need help from Code Weavers, then you should be waiting for official support, which is probably going to come in the very near future. If you want to be able to use this, you need to type in this full phrase and then press agree and proceed. Now CX Patcher is ready to use. So we're going to configure some settings first, go to advanced options, and then we're going to be enabling DXVK integrate GPTK. We're going to use a separate bottle path. We're going to be advertising AVX. We're going to be allowing DXVK async, and then we can tweak some of these settings too. So now we're going to drag and drop crossover into CX Patcher. Now CX Patcher is ready to go. So double click on crossover. Say we're going to install Steam. Click install. Click yes here. Accept. And now we're just going to go through the standard Windows setup of Steam. And now that's going ahead and downloading Steam. So make sure to allow any kind of permissions that the bottle requests. And then I also advise turning on D3D Metal and also the M Sync option and then reboot the bottle. This will allow us to run DirectX 11 and 12 games through crossover. Then we're going to make sure to launch Steam. So here we're going to log in with our Steam account. So if you don't have one already, you can create one for free. 
So now that we have the Windows version of Steam loaded up, we can go into a library and basically download any game that we have. So next we're gonna do is to download and install Grand Theft Auto 5. So if you don't have this purchased already, you can buy this on the Steam store. Just a reminder, we cannot launch GTA Online due to the Battle Eye anti-cheat. If you wanna find out how to do that, then please make sure to follow my tutorial for GTA Online on Parallels on a Mac. Running it through a virtual machine on Windows 11 on Canary will allow you to join multiplayer servers online. Anyway, it's going to go ahead and download and install some dependencies, including the Steam Common Redistributable. Eventually, you're going to get a pop-up for the Rockstar Games Launcher. So I want to go ahead and press the Continue button, select so like Language, press Continue, and then install this into the bottle once again. So now it's installing Visual C++ Redistributables, and it's initializing service. So just let that finish. Now the launcher says that it's doing an update, so just let that complete as well. Now when you get this message, don't worry too much, all you've got to do is press quit, and then we're going to move on to the next step. So once we quit, what we're going to do is to go back into the crossover bottle where you'll see a new Rockstar Games launcher icon, and then double click to open this up. It'll say that it's updating again, and then we have the opportunity to log into our Rockstar Games launcher account. So make sure that you have an account associated with your Steam account already, or you can just create one if you don't have one already, and then you can go ahead and log in. Once you're logged in, the Rockstar Games Launcher will show all of the games associated with your account. Here we can now press play on Steam in order to play the Steam version of GTA 5. Next, what's going to happen is that you're probably going to see this little black window open up. So if you want to full screen this, just press the command and enter keys at the same time, and then it will full screen for you. Also, it's a really good idea to play this game with a controller. So I've got my Xbox Series controller. You can also do this with the PlayStation DualSense controller. I'm going to put my control into pairing mode by holding down the pairing button here and then the Xbox light is going to start flashing. You can also do this on DualSense controller as well. Then we're going to go to system settings and then we're going to go to Bluetooth and then scroll down until under near by devices we see that the Xbox wireless controller has popped up here. We're going to press connect and then that'll just take a moment for that to connect and once it's connected the light on the controller is going to go a solid light like that and then that's now paired up. So now I'm controlling the game with my controller. You can also go ahead and tweak some of the settings as well. So I like to change some of my graphic settings, put this at 16 by nine at 1080 or 1440p in order to get the best kind of uh, screen real estate and graphics. Go ahead and make sure to tweak the window screen as well to either something like windowed or windowed borderless. So that's helped to fix the aspect ratio. It might flick a little bit, don't worry about that. And now we're basically ready to go ahead and play the game. So I'm basically running this at what I call normal settings at 1440p on my MacBook Pro with the M3 Max chip. And the benchmark isn't doing too badly, getting over 100 FPS easily on a lot of these kind of benchmark areas. So here I've loaded up into the game itself. So we're inside the house and you know internally we've got good frame rates over 100 FPS, which is really not too bad considering we're running this at 1440p. And the outside world isn't too bad either. So here I've gone into a car and I'm driving around and we're getting over 100 FPS at this resolution and detail setting, which is pretty good considering that we're running this through multiple Windows translation layers. It's going from DirectX 11 to Metal, it's going from x86-64 to ARM64, and it's going from Windows API into macOS API calls. So anyway, I hope you found this video helpful and interesting. If you still want to play the multiplayer version of this game, you can do so through the Parallels Virtual Machine using Windows 11 ARM on Canary build. Just be aware that you'll get only a fraction of the performance of the crossover single player version. So something like 20% of the performance just because of all of the overhead of virtualizing Windows 11 ARM on a Mac and also doing the emulation from x86-64 to ARM64. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.